Once again, uh, a very good morning to you and welcome to Norway, to Lillehammer, and indeed to the famous Olympic Birkebeiner Stadium for the men's skiathlon. 30 kilometers, the first 15 in classic style, the second for skate style, and both the tracks on the same part of the course as it was for the women. So the men will be skiing 3.75 kilometer loops. So in classic style, that's four rotations. Likewise in the freestyle. And for the men, there are two bonus point opportunities on the classic legs and two on the freestyle. So uh, in this men's race, no less than 79 competitors from 17 nations. And now one or two important facts to note. Well, Norway, a master of the sports, Svindal and Bjørndalen amongst the uh, greats of Nordic sport. So Svindal and Björndalen, uh, Norway successful in biathlon relays. Sundby, the man who's uh, made a big statement. And uh, Micah and Kasperson Faller when it comes to the sprints. So here we are uh, once again in fine form for the men's skiathlon we're going to take a little break and then set up the race uh, after that with of course andrew uh, musgrave who sports bib number 16 and looking for a really good run roy young uh, out here but um, also uh, andrew uh, musgrave's uh, pro coach Peda hagen also down here more of that when we come back Well, here in Norway, uh, a bit of a one winter wonderland uh, at the moment with fresh snow in the last 24 hours and possibly some more on the way later today. But just at this moment, as the clock uh, ticks towards 11.20, about eight minutes away from the start of the men's skiathlon, the first World Cup men's skiathlon ever to be staged in this country. It's hard to believe, really. But uh, there are 79 competitors led by the man who was successful in Finland last weekend, Martin Jonsrud Sundby. He won Sonora the Rooker Triple yeah, and he success, wears bib uh, number one. Uh, is it one of the, the favorite events for you on the calendar? Yeah, for sure. Uh, as you see the results, had a lot of success in the uh, World Cup and also Olympic Games and World Championships. So yeah, I'm really looking forward and I. Uh, Hope to uh, continue uh, to have a good racing in this uh, this uh, skiathlon. Yeah? And how are uh, how are the conditions out there? Though the women raced on the course, uh, everything's holding up. Yeah, I think it looks good. Uh, good tracks, uh, very compact today. For sure, uh, maybe a little easier than yesterday to ski. And I think everything is ready. And I hope uh, me too. Yeah. 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 Well, we wish you uh, all the best today. Thanks. So, Dario Colonia, the World Cup runner-up last season, and the man who has finished on the podium in the last seven World Cup skiathlons. They have the uh, stats 
for him. And he has four World Cup wins in Skiathlon. That's the most on the all-time list. Uh, shares that with actually Peter Nortug and German racer Tobias Angerer. But uh, Nortug hasn't actually won a skiathlon since uh, 2012 in the Tour de Ski. And incidentally, the only uh, international skiathlon held here was in the Oslo Nordic Ski World Championships back in 2011 when Peter Nortug actually took the gold medal. And the other interesting fact about Colonia is that he's never won a World Cup here in Norway. So uh, plenty of interest, plenty to come. But the race favourite, Martin Jonsrud Sundby. Just under five minutes to go to the men's skiathlon here in the Berkebane Stadium. Temperature getting even a little bit warmer, 0.8 of a degree warmer than it was for the start of the women's race. A little bit of rain in the air, but this is the course. 3.75 kilometers in classic style. Come out of the stadium after 100 meters, you're into the climb, which runs you through an 800 meter loop before you come back close to the commentary boxes and then go out on this long, long pull up a full kilometer. And that is the real test. So here you have uh, 79 competitors from 17 nations, headed by Martin Jonsrud Sundby, the man who was in first place, of course, last weekend in Ruka, and a man who, interestingly, has never won a skiathlon as yet. In the uh, lineup, we've got the likes of uh, the world champion, Maxim Vlekjanin from uh, Russia. Vlekjanin, who won in Falun in uh, February of this year, also won a World Cup last year in Rabinsk. But let me tell you a little bit about Andrew Musgrave, who was 16th in the overall ranking about after Ruka. If, those, if you were watching uh, last weekend, you'll have noticed that in the classic race, Andy was pretty unlucky. The uh, ski iced up as he was coming up the hill towards the stadium, and uh, it just stuck, and it forced him to fall backwards. And as a result of that, he ended outside the top ten in that particular race. Had he uh, not had that problem, he would have been even higher in the ranking. And when the feast rankings are revised, I think you'll see that he'll be in the seeded red group. But today, uh, it's all about this 15 kilometers of classic and 15 kilometers of freestyle. I think he's going to aim on this compact snow to really be in the first 20, hunt up the first half of the race, and then uh, really make a bid in the second half in the freestyle. Helping him, he's got uh, Philip Furrer from Switzerland, who is today the team leader, and uh, also working with Osmond uh, Satter, who's been working on the waxing. I think they were choosing to go with Klister, and also his pro coach from here in Norway, because uh, Andy Musgrave's got uh, a base up in Trondheim, a home up in, Nord in Trondheim. Peter Horgan's come down and is uh, helping on one of the food stations for him. But there you have uh, Alex Harvey of uh, Canada in second place. Legkov wears uh, number three. He was eighth in Rooker. And uh, Dierhug of uh, Norway, seventh in the World Cup last year, as these men line up to come under starters' orders. Wearing three here, Alexander Legkov. And so, uh, just as we look at the clock, still a couple of minutes to go before the start of this men's first ever World Cup skiathlon here in Norway. So, Sunby looking for his first skiathlon win. Legjanin, the world champion, looking to follow up on his world championship success. Kolonia, who's never won a World Cup, he also looking for a World Cup success in Norway. I should say first World Cup success for Colonia in Norway. Okay. 60 seconds to go to the start.
And the starters' orders for the men's skiathlon here in Lillehammer. 79 competitors, 17 countries. Martin Jonsrud Sundby in the center, wearing the Wiesman yellow bib, having won the Rooker triple, and he leads the way. Very much the uh, favorite, the man who is fit and in form on the first of their 3.75 kilometer rotations. Barely 100 meters of flat before they're into the first of the loops, which takes them over to the right-hand side on this compact course, compact in terms of the snow condition, much better than yesterday when it was truly soft. And it's Alex Harvey over there wearing two, seven on the far side there. That's uh, to, uh, Holland of uh, Norway. And also uh, moving forward, wearing uh, 10, Dario Colonia in the all black for Switzerland. So Dario Colonia incredibly looking for his first ever World Cup success in Norway. The man who's finished on the podium in his last seven starts in the discipline of skiathlon. And that includes World Cup, World Championships and Olympic Games. Martin Jodzrudsenby, who has yet to win a skiathlon. He was the bronze medalist in the Winter Olympics in Sochi in this particular discipline. And of course, he is the defending World Cup champion. Andrew Musgrave of Great Britain wears uh, 16. 15 is worn by the very talented Frenchman Maurice uh, Magnificat. Petter Nortog wears bib number 13. Vilek Janin, the world champion, wears bib number 12. As we uh, see them up the first of the climbs, the easiest probably of all the three climbs. Finding their rhythm, finding their pitch and pace here. 55 uh, moving up there, notice that, that was uh, quite a big move being put in there by uh, Jens Berman of uh, Sweden. So all of them now beginning to establish themselves, but already a little bit like the women's race, which was won in the past 30 minutes by Teresa Juhav. It's Martin Jönsrudsenby who's stretching on Holland there in second place. We're seeing 14-17, uh, seeing going through, that's Anders Blursen. So, uh, as ever, we'll uh, keep track of Andrew uh, Musgrave as they go through the uh, early stages. So through the first uh, 800 meters. So Sundby from Holland of Norway and Dierhoog of Norway, Alex uh, Harvey as well, well to the four. Still to get through the first couple of kilometers. And Norwegians very much to the fore at the moment. Just looking back to try and uh, track Great Britain's Andrew Musgrave in 30th place, some 11.9 seconds back through the first 800 meters. Not a problem at the moment, but of course, the, all the fields sorting themselves out. So it is. Martin Jonsrudsen, 31 years of age, based these days out of Oslo, the man who was actually runner-up in the World Championships of 2013 in this discipline in Val di Fiemme, and as I said, a bronze medalist in the Olympic Games. World Cup champion for the past two seasons and always seems to start the season pretty strongly 
won the 30k here in Lillehammer last year, 2014, won the 30 kilometer in Kusamo, and of course, just last weekend, won the Rooker Triple. So, starting the season in fine style, a season in which there are no Nordic Ski World Championships, but two major targets, the Tour de Ski over the New Year holidays, and also this innovative new tour right at the end of the campaign in March when we go across to uh, Canada and a lot of people really looking forward to that. So following up there in second place, Norwegians very much to the fore, and that is uh, Nicholas uh, Dierhoek from uh, Trondheim, coached by Trond Nystad. And uh, this is a man who was seventh in Falun in the World Championships in the Skiathlon. Ranked seventh in the 50-kilometer Tour de Ski. Mass start, and there you can see Turnseth in uh, third place. Legs running also uh, very close as they go through this point and now of course they're going to be on this long climb. Andrew uh, Musgrave was down inside the top 30 some 11 seconds off. Just uh, keep, try and keep track of him for you. And he's dropped to 35th place. He's now 20 seconds off the lead. So, in this classic style, probably actually experiencing quite a lot of traffic, Andy Musgrave. So, they were really feeling very optimistic, particularly after last weekend's performances in uh, Ruka. So Sundby, Dürhaug and Turnseth and Norway actually occupying through the first 2.2 kilometers the first five places, then Legstrov and Vilekjanin for Russia, then Harvey for Canada, Jonas Dobler for Germany in ninth place and Magna Haga completing the top ten. So six Norwegians in the top ten. Alex Harvey wearing bib number two. 27 years of age now, coached by Louis Bouchard. And finished in ninth place overall last season in the World Cup, but actually uh, sixth coming in to the early part of this World Cup season as a result of finishing in, I think it was second place in the Rooker Triple, no, seventh place in the Rooker Triple overall and a breakaway as you can see here and uh, this is very much uh, a Norwegian affair early stages though long way to go and a fantastic crowd cheering on Theresa Juhaug and now doing exactly the same to Martin Jonsrudsenby he leads from uh, Deerhog and then Turnseth wearing six and then Finn Krug. And these four beginning to break away. Three and a half kilometers completed by that leading four. In fact, uh, just looking at that, that's Legkop, I think, in fourth place now. Sunbi, Dürhag, Turnseth, Legkov, Veledjanin, and then Holland. Krog has dropped back, actually, in that last segment as they uh, come into the stadium, having already, as you can see, completed 3.75 kilometers. Now, on the next rotation, so the second and third time around, there will be bonus points to be earned as they come back into the stadium this is the Audi Quattro bonus point system for the season and as it was for the women 
First across the line, 15 points, 12 to second, 10 to third, 8 to fourth, etc., etc. So 3.75. And when we come back, uh, I'll bring you up to date as to any Musgrave's progress. Oh, he's um, 26 seconds off the pace, just outside the top 40. So, second leg, second classic leg of this men's skiathlon. And Martin Jonsrudsen, the uh, leading uh, Alexander Legkov, moved into second place. There he is, wearing bib number three, just ahead of uh, Dierhag. That's Nicholas Dierhag of Norway. And then six there. That's uh, turn set of Norway. Twelve up there, the Legjan in the world champion. And uh, right behind seven, that's uh, Holland. And also in there, De Fabiani of Italy, man who's uh, strong in the under-23 uh, rankings. De Fabiani, uh, just 22 years of age. Little bobble on top of the Italian hat there as he goes through. Just uh, losing a, a little position there, Valek Zanin. And here come the chasers. And led by uh, Sergei Ustigov. Now, if you can uh, spot Andrew Musgrave in amongst this pack here, 16 is the bib number that he wears. There he is, right on the far side, just going through the picture there. So he's in that big pack. Back to the leaders. And at the moment, uh, mercifully, the forecast rain and snow holding off, the air temperature up to 4 Celsius. The snow at zero and the humidity around about 86%. And at the moment, conditions are pretty good. 24 going through there representing Germany. That's uh, Jonas Dobler. Germans with a new generation beginning to come through in their cross country ranks. Jonas from Traunstein, coached by Janko Neuber, and a man who has been to the Junior World Championships and the Under-23 World Championships. Uh, not a bad finish, 12th place back in 2013 in Liberec in the Skiathlon, but only 24 years of age, so maybe better things from him to come. And now, a uh, new pace setter up there. And it is Didrik Turnseth. Nedkov dropped back and slipping there, as you can see. Likewise there for Dierhug. Turnseth from Trondheim. And uh, World Cup-wise, outside the top 20 last year, but that was his best ever season-long campaign and included a runners-up spot in the 15-kilometer classic race in Davos. And, of course, the circus goes to Davos for next weekend, live on Eurosport. The race is at altitude at 1,600 meters in Davos. And now Indian file. There's the Italian in that blue outfit. And just at the back there, uh, Hans Christa Holland for uh, Norway. A little bit uh, separated there, Belegzanin for Russia, the world champion, who was 11th uh, last weekend in Ruka. And then this very big gap, sorry, very big group, which uh, added up uh, by, I think it was actually, uh, could have been... Uh, 
Simon Sveen of Norway leading this chasing group, wearing uh, 29. Leaders coming to six kilometers, so not yet halfway. Chasing group have got them in their sights. Six kilometers and the front half dozen separated by just four seconds. Dario Colonia, you can see in that chasing group. Ustagov in there. And just uh, moving down. Dario Colonia, about 20 seconds off the pace. Nurtug in there in 15th place, about 21, 22 seconds behind. Magnificat of France also some 23 seconds off the pace. Alex Harvey wearing bib 2, 27, 28 seconds behind. Polteranin of Kazakhstan, 30 seconds to find at the moment. Jean-Marc Gaia, 31 seconds off the pace. And uh, moving down, Andrew Musgrave still in that very big group but towards the back of it some 40 seconds off the pace but he seems to have stabilized the deficit now and now needs to try and move forward but remember this is only the second of the classic legs so now needs to start moving forward what he produced in Ruka was extremely good it was uh, effectively a classic personal best for him last weekend A little bit news for uh, ski jumping fans. Uh, the wind conditions still pretty gusty in the nearby Lillehammer ski jumping stadium. Yeah, so just to reiterate a little bit of news uh, about the ski jumping this afternoon that uh, due to the expected windy conditions, the competition is being transferred off the big hill onto the 90 meter smaller hill, which the women use, and uh, that will involve qualification this afternoon in the competition at uh, 15 minutes before five. But back to the cross country, and it's the Italian. Francesco da Fabiani now, Moving through to take the lead. Coming back into the stadium complex. And of course, uh, this is all about the bonus point sprints as well. Uh, this is the first opportunity to get those sprints and 7.5 kilometers. So half distance. Turnsteps and B, De Fabiani all boxing up together again. And leading the chasers here, Sergei Ustagov. So a second group and then uh, a third file. Seven and a half thousand uh, meters. Looking out there for uh, number 16, just gone through. Not such a good finish to 
that particular leg by Andy Musgrave. He's lost time and he's lost position as well. Lost uh, five seconds in the last two kilometres and has dropped to 53rd place in the ranking just behind Noah Hoffman of the United States. And not much uh, further in front of him, Tony Livers and Kurt and Pearl. Sammy Yoyovi of Finland in that uh, group with uh, Andy Musgrave. Andy Musgrave about, uh, just looking at this, he would be about uh, seven, eight seconds behind Sami uh, Yoyovi of Finland. So at the moment, not making the ex expected progress, uh, not really hunting in the way that we hoped he possibly would to be in touch with a freestyle leg. So once again out of the stadium on this relatively straightforward climb, but nothing on this course is straightforward. Quite simply, there's no time to rest at all. If you're not going up, you're coming down. And I suppose only uh, just under 100 metres as you leave the stadium, that's about the flattest part. And of course, when you come back into the stadium for the final, what, 100, 150 metres. And it's Jonsrud back in the lead. So Martin uh, Jonsrud out of the stadium, heading towards 8.3 kilometres. 13 in picture there, that's uh, Peder Nortug. 10, Dario Colonia, little slip from him. In that group, Martin Johansson of Sweden. So all these guys really go leg cough to the back there. Just trying to accelerate, taking on the all-important liquid. Replenishment absolutely vital over 30,000 metres. And there, Ustagov with side-by-side his -side Russian teammate Stanislav Volshensev. Sergei Ustigov, a great achiever at Universiad Junior and under 23 levels. Sergei, a former junior world skiathlon champion and also won the under 23 title the juniors came in 2012 the under 23 came in 2013 leg cough just a little bit detached at the moment shouldn't be in that really nice economic aerodynamic tuck there saving energy very economic in his skiing and be happy to be out front just applying the pressure now third leg they go out good opportunity to look out of their right eye just to catch and see who might be there uh, Dario Colonia in that second group and shouldn't be look at this terrific cadence that he has there's the Italian De Fabiani in second place for Dirhaug in third. Great rhythm here. But I have to say that uh, Fabiani doing a really good job here. Fabiani an excellent fourth in the Rooker triple.
This is a really punishing climb and heavy skies above. Certainly uh, threatening some rain. Forecast in Norway. Not it actually terribly inviting. A lot of rain coming in from Scotland into the west coast and working its way across the country. Big storm in Stockholm last night, bringing pretty well everything in that city to a standstill. Finn Krog just having a little look around. Just over five kilometers to go to the pit stop and the change of skis and poles. Legkov looking a little bit laboured, finding it hard now. That detachment. So, uh, the leaders less than 5,000 metres from the pit stop and the changeover. So, further back in the field, I can tell you that Kurt Ampel of Switzerland has pulled up and Andy Musgrave has gone through the 9.7 kilometre mark and he's in... 52nd place but all of 76 seconds off the lead so the race plan not working out sadly great deal of optimism but it'll be interesting to see what he can do whether he can limit the damage whether he can come back and gain some ground in the freestyle section but here comes the bonus opportunity but these men very much in their minds, it's not so much the bonus opportunity, but the overall race pace to Fabiani of Italy up there. And you can see they're barely really racing to the bonus, but... Legkov, even further detached now, lost another second and a half. This is uh, Ustagov wearing uh, 21-41 right behind him there. That's uh, Emil Iverson. Iverson representing Norway. So that's a good piece of progress by Emil. So 11 and a quarter kilometers and it's Italy in the lead from Nicholas Dierhaug of Norway, then Sundby, then Holland you can see and at the back of that little group there, Didrik Turnseth. I've really talked about uh, the Norwegian uh, Christian, uh, Christa, Hans Christa Holland at the moment, skiing a, a good race, the uh, Trondheimer. No uh, huge record to pull forward on. Was outside the top 40 in last year's ranking. As you see, the chasing group coming through. Belek Janin has lost ground. Look at these men here, 40 seconds off. Finished uh, a decent fourth, though. Hans Christian... Holland in the 15-kilometer classic race in Rooker, which helped him to an overall ninth place in the Rooker Triple. So uh, one of his best performances opening up in the first weekend of cross-country skiing in the new World Cup season. Peter Nortog with about 30 seconds to find at the moment. Interesting to see what moves he makes during the freestyle section of the race. 
Maurice Magnificat travelling uh, with uh, Pedro Norto. Belegjan in now back 40 seconds off the pace. Dario Colonia also uh, 40 seconds to find at this moment. Belegjan in uh, in the top 20. Actually being shadowed by his former Russian teammate uh, Ivan Babakov, of course, who now represents Canada. So the donkey work now, Nicholas uh, De Haug from Sunby, from uh, Fabiani. Three away. 30 coming through. The gap's beginning to really open up now. Volshensev wears bib number 30. Most magnificat 14 there. That's Pedro Norto all in white. Seven hanging on at the back there. That's uh, Holland, that was talking about a few moments ago. Eight here, Finn Krog, followed by Sergei uh, Ustagov. No, sorry, I beg your pardon. That's Turnsef, followed by Sergei Ustagov, who's making some ground. Legkov being eclipsed and also being chased there by Iverson of uh, Norway. Magnifica. 13, just uh, slipping painted. No talk. 14, I beg your pardon, I confused uh, uh, Peter Nortuk with Martin Johansson of Sweden. I beg, do beg your pardon for that mistake. And you can see the sort of traffic that Andy Musgrave has had to deal with and this has been a disappointing uh, first leg in terms of the classic style for him. So the World Cup leader back in front now and effectively four away three of them Norwegian one Italian and I can tell you that Finn Hogan Krog has now uh, quit the race as well he's out of it along with the Kodan Pearl Moving towards the thirteen point five kilometer point. I gather that uh, some of you have lost pictures, so apologies for that, but I'll try to keep you informed here. And Martin Jons would soon be sitting comfortably as they go up this long grueling climb yet again up front there and setting the pace not afraid to put in his share of work being chased by Nicholas Dierhag who's stalking him and then behind the Italian Francesco De Fabiani just losing a little ground in fourth place there the injection of pace put in by the leader, by Martin Jonsson Sundby, significant, conscious of the fact that you know they're approaching the 13.5 kilometer point, at which point 1500 to go to the changeover. So this is the long hard slog for the last time in classic style. And here is that all important checkpoint. Then of course, as they reach the top of this climb, they have this uh, rather windy and continuous descent which takes them back down into the stadium and the pit stop <laughs> and 
And they really opened up, as you can see there. Sad to report that Andrew Musgrave not having a good time of this at all. He's just outside the top 50, but more significantly, he's just lost another 12 seconds. And now running at almost uh, 90 seconds behind the current leader. Ustagov, though, perhaps the man who interests me most because he's made progress into fifth place. And the other man who's interesting is also uh, Iverson of Norway, who's traveling with Ustagov. Emil Iverson, another Norwegian in his mid-twenties, who also showed up in the Under-23 World Championships a couple of seasons ago in this skiathlon discipline, finished in the top ten, but definitely having one of his better runs at the moment. This is turn Seth being followed by uh, Legkov. And these two, 30 seconds off the leader. Sunbi stretching now. They've dropped Fabiani. It's a 1-2-3 for Norway at the moment. Sunbi, Dierhaug, Holland. So three away, three Norwegians are going to be first into the stadium to change their skis and poles. But essentially, it's the progress of the World Cup leader, the defending World Cup champion. Never won a skiathlon in the World Cup. Might this be the day? And so far, the likes of Colonia and also Petar Nortuk not players in this race. Magnificat uh, moving forward. Interesting, he's now about 40 seconds. I'll be interesting to see on the next check whether he's made any further progress. Technically, very, very efficient, Martin Jonsrud Sundby. And starting the season so well, hoping that it's going to be a, a hat-trick of World Cup titles. Long way to go, but let's see how they handle the pit stop. Remember the women, they were changing skis around about 37 seconds. Theresa Johan took 40, 41 seconds. So De Fabiani now 10 seconds off. Ustagov 18 seconds off the lead. So he's made about three seconds. So uh, essentially really good progress by Ustagov and Iverson. Legkov falling back, Turnseth falling back and Volshensev falling back as well. So here we go. Unclip, straight across. Pick up those taller poles for the freestyle skate. Fabiani making a bit of a meal of it here and losing further time. That was not particularly well executed. And you could see the uns the uncertainty, 21, there is Ustagov, who's just going out, Legkov coming in, Legkov being uh, followed by Volshensev. Leg 
kickoff, of course, the Olympic 50 kilometer freestyle champion from the Sochi Olympic Games. No medals, though, for Legkov in Falun. 32 years of age, the Russian from Khantimansisk. But at the moment, not really a force. Interesting to see whether we can find anything in this second phase. So they go out on the first of their four 3.75 kilometer freestyle legs skating. And here a chance to have a look at uh, Jonsrud Sunsby's speed in changing. 36 seconds it took him to change skis and poles. Deerhaug in 37 also, Holland 39, De Fabiani 38, Ustegov 40. So is this the way it's going to finish? Norway 1, 2, 3. And is Martin Jonsud Sumbi going to have it all his own way or are his teammates getting, going to get involved in this? I think this is a fascinating situation we have here now. Through the halfway stage now, can Ustagov close an 18-second gap? He only needs to make eight seconds to be on the ski tails of Fabiani in fourth place. He's traveling with Iverson of Norway. And then there's a gap of 20 seconds back to Legkov. So real interest in Sergei Ustagov and Emil Iverson of Norway to see whether they can make an impression on the front three. Two more bonus sprints to provide further opportunity for extra points for the season-long Audi Quattro series. But at the moment, uh, I'm sure that these front three, all they have in their minds is winning this race. And 41 going through there. That is Emil Iverson. And he has got past Fabiani. And you can see that Ustagov hasn't got to Fabiani. So Iverson giving Norway one, two, three, four at the moment. And 22 seconds to find. So he's lost a little bit of time on the front three, Iverson. But he has improved his position. And... Also uh, moving up well there, Magnificat. Gaining a place or two. There's Colonia from 17th place. Going through 15.1 uh, kilometers. Nortug is about 43 seconds off in the top 10. So Sunbi, Dierhag, Holland, Fabiani has just been overtaken by Iverson, Ustakov ahead of Legkov, Osensev and Turnsev and Peder Nortug. That's the top 10. And then after that, Magnificat in 14th place, Colonia in 16th. Uh, Colonia with about 50 odd seconds to find. Tall order if he wants to be winning in Norway for the first time. And meanwhile, you can see here Martin Jonsrud Sunbi now in this higher tempo really skating beautifully up here the balance look at the shoulders there and real drive going right down into the skis getting really good extension and this is super stuff from Jonsrud Sundby who over the past two seasons has just gone from strength to strength the Olympic bronze medalist of skiathlon skiing away from his teammates giving them a clean pair of heels and this his decisive move very early on in the freestyle section of this men's skiathlon a determination to get a victory in this discipline on home snow and he really has made an impact here Sunby opening up. Everson, 22 seconds back. Fabiani traveling with him 
Ustagov a little bit behind the pace. Magnificat up to seventh ahead of Legkov. Turnsev has dropped back to ninth place. Martin Johansson of Sweden, the best for his country now, into the top ten. Martin Johansson in his early 30s having a pretty good race he was outside the top 30 in Falun at the World Championships so here's uh, Everson Fabiani sticking to his skeet tails just behind you can see Ustagov So 34 seconds to Everson, and that is the big difference in the last section there. Everson has lost 12 seconds to Martin Jonsson Sunby, or perhaps I should put it the other way around. Sunby has taken 12 further seconds out of Everson. And that really is remarkable because that's come in 1.4 kilometers, that sort of gain. So uh, I'll have a little check further down the field. Uh, Nortug is just behind uh, Magnificat. Both of them still with about 50 seconds to find. And to put that in perspective, they are about oh, 10 seconds or so behind Ustagov. And they've got to find about uh, 20 odd seconds to get to uh, Fabiani. Well, majestic skiing here by Martin Jonsrudsenby. He's really seen off all the opposition. And whilst he's been doing that, I can tell you that Andrew Musgrave is travelling together with Jean-Marc Gaillard of France. The pair of them uh, just about uh, two minutes and eight seconds off the leader. So a long way back. Musgrave and Gaillard improving their positions, but only the top 30 get World Cup points. So you follow my meaning, they're out of the points and that will be very, very disappointing. Because I know that uh, Roy Young and the British team have been hoping that, at the very least, that Andy would finish in the top 30 in the World Cup points. But that's looking more and more doubtful at the moment. He's done a, a lot of physical work with the Scottish Institute to improve his core strength. And that really uh, has been paying off, or it seemed to, certainly in Finland, in Ruka. And they're out here again to observe him. Not to improve his skiing, that's not their forte, but they, I think, also will be disappointed for him that he's not actually been able to ever really get into this race. And this is a true procession, but we're still you know, a long way from home. So, Sunbi. through the 18 and a half uh, kilometer point twenty two seconds now the gap back to Holland and he's having a great race I have to say that uh, here he is wearing seven being shadowed there by Nicholas uh, Deerhug and then a little further back some 20 seconds back is Emil Everson, or he was the last time we caught a sight of him, and he's being shadowed by Francesco De Fabiani of Italy, he's still running a really good race. And Ustagov now closing, he's within seven, eight seconds of uh, De Fabiani, and Magnificat not able to go with him, nor took in eighth place, Volshensev of Russia in ninth, Anders Glerson of Norway in 10th but he's 70 odd seconds off the lead
Another man to uh, quit the race, uh, Dietmar Nöckler of Italy. Sunby taking on the liquid in a very measured way. And unless something really untoward happens, it's really difficult to see him losing this race. And he will be setting a new milestone if he continues in this manner. Holland also, uh, you've got to say, this is an impressive performance by him. And at the moment, very much on course for his first ever World Cup podium. Dirhag also running a, an extremely impressive race. Shades of Teresa Johau, two Norwegians doing it their way, and maybe Martin Jonsrud Sundby doesn't have the distinctive high tempo of Teresa Johau, but he has got this absolutely beautifully balanced position over his skis. And you can also see the ski contact on the snow. You can see those skis not really coming off the snow by more than maybe a couple of centimeters and that means the contact is really good the contact means that the speed is maintained and this man is in great shape really hard work to put in these sort of hours in uh, training remember i was uh, highlighting that teresa is putting in 11 to 1200 hours of training per year and it's not just getting there but it's also maintaining your fitness certainly racing helps but uh, he's really moved away in a huge way ahead of the opposition. A couple of races have now been lapped as this man goes on his way. There's not much these two can do about it as well as you can see 21 kilometers coming up here. And they've still got some way to go at the previous checkpoint. Uh, it was a gap, I'll just check on this now. Yeah, 19.6 kilometers. The gap was 22 seconds. And you can see the devastation that the leader is causing 38 seconds back to uh, Holland. That's uh, a, a gap that's widened by some 16 seconds. And these two men chasing Holland and Dierhard just can't keep with the pace. Fourth place, big game by Magnificat. Everson behind of Norway. Then Nortug. But look at the time differentials. Improving in position, but not really making an impression. But the interesting thing is, can Magnificat with uh, Nortug, can they move up the order any further? Fabiani, obviously, now vulnerable. Ustagov. The progress has ceased.
Well, this is where concentration really becomes a premium. He doesn't have to sprint to the bonus line. It's 15 points, which he can collect at his own pace here. But when you're out on your own like this, concentration really important to keep this freestyle skating rhythmical, technically proficient. You can see just meeting the climb, accelerating, just getting a little bit more drive in here, lifting it up. And that's only 2,800 metres to the finish in the first ever World Cup Skiathlon victory for Martin Jonsrud Sundsby. And he just gets better and better and he becomes more and more impressive. Well, as ever, he's the man doing the work on the track, but there's a team of Norwegians, coaches, servicemen, who have been responsible as he goes through the Dürf gang for the final time. Sunby, not quite inside of home, but you sort of know what I mean. And another four seconds gained on Holland and Dierhau. And it's a question, is this really Sunby? gaining those four seconds or is it just the others weakening I'd like to say that it shouldn't be because he hasn't really relaxed at all he's kept pushing he's kept moving his technique is terrific and Magnificat in fourth place Everson three seconds behind but travelling with Nortug is about to perhaps surpass his Norwegian teammate Norto, who hasn't won a skiathlon in Norway since the World Championship title, which he won in 2011. So, at the moment, you can see the uh, bonus point uh, status there. I'll just uh, run back down to... Check on the progress of Mr. Musgrave. And at the moment, just he was traveling with Jean Marc Gaillard at 248 deficit. But he's moved up to 38th place. So Andrew Musgrave now, two minutes 40 off the lead, but he's eight places out of a World Cup point. Top 30. At the way that he's moving now, Andrew Musgrave might just possibly get into a World Cup point. So that really disappointing classic leg, which left him so much to do, now beginning to show his prowess in the 15-kilometer skating section, as you see the leader once again. The 15-kilometer freestyle race and the skiathlon in the 2018 Olympics are the targets for Andrew Musgrave. 25 years of age, based out of Trondheim, a man who's succeeded in beating all the Norwegians last season in the in a national championship race right here in Norway and really getting stronger by the season and well respected here in this country. The best Nordic cross-country skier, but can he find those places? He has all the motivation in the world as this man now becomes in to the last, what, 1,700 metres of the race. Well, I said 1,700 metres, I do beg your pardon, he's got another 6.7 kilometres to go, Sunby. And this gap is widening. And because it is 6.7 kilometres to go, that means that Britain's Andrew Musgrave does have a chance to 
take a few more scalps to get closer to a, a World Cup point. Just reflecting again on uh, Andrew's performance in uh, Ruka, he was 13th in the 10 kilometer freestyle section. It was the uh, classic pursuit where he had that fall that really cost him a top 10 place. But they've all got a heck of a lot to do to catch this man if he continues in the following weeks, he'll be looking forward to Davos and Altitude as well. Most of the field through uh, 23 kilometers. And some racers really struggling. Dario Colonia down in 27th place, two minutes and 19 seconds off the pace. And he's, well, barely a second ahead of Devon Kershaw. Good news for Andrew Musgrave. Now up into 32nd place and 2.57. The gap time-wise, chronometrically, he's losing. Positions, he's gaining. And he's just behind Matthias Rundgren of Norway and Hegelstedt of uh, Norway also. He's got, at the moment, uh, about... When I say he's just behind, to be absolutely honest, he's got about 20 seconds. He's got to find to, by right, to get into the top 30, unless, of course, one or two of those down the bottom, the likes of Noah Hoffman, Devin Kershaw, and the two Norwegians I've just mentioned, start to weaken. These guys have had a good race as well. Dear how Holland, but they are no match for Sunby. 5.3 kilometers, a little bit more than that for these men. And the further they go, the further Sunbi extends. Fantastic. Encouragement from the crowd. Magnificat still holding on to fourth place. Norto predictably up to fifth. Travelling with Magnificat. Only a second between them. Iverson, Shirota making progress. Interesting that Shirota was 10th in Ruka. Top 15 in last year's World Cup rankings. So... Norwegians coming from the back. Shirota, of course, on home snow. Lilliham, Lillehammer, his base. And this is the man who you might remember, Shirota, an excellent bronze medal back in the World Championships of 2013, back in Val de Fieme. That really the highlight of his championship performances. I guess the other one was 
winning last season the 50 kilometer freestyle race in Oslo, the Holman Collin. So Sunby now, 4.1 kilometers to go. Nobody can touch him. And it's applause all the way. Legs will be tired. Lactate will build up, body will burn. But he's paced this absolutely beautifully. Made a big move as they came out of the stadium, having finished the classic legs to really put the pressure on his teammates, De Haag and Holland. Got rid of uh, Fabiani as well. Ustagov couldn't do any more either. And the further they go, look at this. Now a minute the difference. Magnificat Nortug still together, but Nortug, of course, likely to have the finishing pace. But Magnificat the best for France. Nortug in a bunch of Norwegians, quite incredible at the moment. One, two, three, four, five, six uh, Norwegians. Seven Norwe no, seven Norwegians in the top eight. Unbelievable. Just shows you their strength. There's Magnificat, you just uh, caught him there, Nortug right with him. Nortug wearing uh, 13. <laughs> then Iverson and then uh, Shirota in seventh place, Glursen for Norway in eighth, Volsensev in ninth, Lenkov in tenth for Russia. Alex Harvey, the best Canadian, down in 11th place. Ustigov uh, not able to make any progress. Simon Sveen of Norway in 13th place, running a good race. Jonas Dobler, the top German runner in 15th place. And Dario Colonia uh, still with more people ahead of him than behind him Colonia running in 29th place 2 minutes 40 off the pace Musgrave still in 32nd place still with a lot of work to do Musgrave to get into the top 30 And he's not making any more progress at this moment. He's some um, 28 seconds out of 30th position. Musgrave is actually now uh, 34 seconds behind Dario Colonia. This just gives you an idea of how punishing these tracks have been, how hard this journey, how stiff this challenge has been for all these men and indeed the women who preceded them in their skiathlon. Big effort by Magnificat to ward off Nortug. And these two having their own private battle. It's going to be very interesting when we get into the finish of the race to see who's got the sprinting speed, who's got the strength in their legs.
Coming up to a minute, the differential between Sunby Holland and Der Deerhog. There's Everson. Just preceded by Shurota. Shurota finishing strongly. And uh, Shurota up ahead of Pedernoto. Pedernoto seems to have run out of gas now. Magnificat the stronger, but Shurota within eight seconds of Magnificat. And then it would be a one, two, three, four for Norway. Everson, not much more to do. And Glerson. Well, Shensev and Legkov are also not making any impression. Just looking at the leader here, Sunbi. Perhaps not quite so powerful as we saw him in the mid part of the race. Might be just relaxing a little bit here. Or is it the fatigue really? coming on now just as I say that he finds a little bit more as he's asked to tackle the incline the Fabiani really suffering right the way back now to 27th place Two minutes and 44. How well did he stay with the action in the first half, the classic part of the race. But this freestyle race has really found him out, this freestyle 15. And it's astonishing some of the athletes who may not be in peak condition. But again, you look at Colonia, 2.51 off the pace. Devon Kershaw, 2.41. And... Musgrave has actually dropped back now to 34th place. He's been overtaken by Adrian Backschreider of France and Simons Kruger of Norway. So that elusive World Cup point doesn't look as if it's going to come his way despite all his efforts. But maybe running out of petrol, having to give so much earlier in the freestyle part of the race to try and get himself back in contention, but now paying for that as we come towards the end. Sunbi within 1,500 metres of the finish now. And so are these two pretty well. And actually, interestingly there, Sunbi slowing a little bit. There, the gap has closed by some three seconds. So maybe Sunbi just easing off a little bit. These two in second and third working hard. 15 here. This is uh, Magnificat. And look at Shurota coming up there. Shurota has closed eight seconds and he's right with him. And Shurota goes past the Frenchman and it's one, two, three, four for Norway. So this, the lonely bit of the course for the lead up and indeed for second and third, but Norway looking to occupy the first four places, a real dominant performance here by the Norwegian team. Unsurprising, you could say, but impressive nonetheless. And the most impressive of all, Martin Jonsrud Sundby, who's been truly in command of this race, absolutely, in the last 15 kilometers. Time to acknowledge the congratulations from the fans. And now, the cat and mouse here. And it's Holland who's gone ahead of Dierhoff. So, what happens here on the rundown? And look at this. He really wants to show his class, doesn't he? As he absolutely sprints up the final incline here. Really showing his well-being. Drops down. One or two acknowledgements. 
But Martin Jans Rutsumbi, very much the king today, as he was in Ruka. And these two vying for second and third. Just as they come into the straight, Holland wearing seven. And Dirag wearing bib number four. But it's all about this man. The man and the woman who were led after last weekend's races in Ruka do so again here in Lillehammer. He has the whole of the straight to himself. And Martin Jonsrud Sundby enhances his World Cup advantage, retains the Wiesmann World Cup yellow bib, turns round, keeps an eye on what's happening behind. Holland it was who made the break. But look at this, four. This is Dirhag, who's counter-attacked out of our view and has gone past Christa Holland and now comes down towards the finish. Holland, who's never been on a individual World Cup podium in third place. And uh, Dirhag, another great effort from him. And personal best in skiathlon, one, two, three for Norway. And wait for Shurota as well, because he's not far away either. Shurota in fourth, Maurice Magnificat in fifth, Mar uh, Peter Nortug in sixth. And he's just got better and better as the race has gone along. And the local Lillehammer lad, Shurota, although he's one minute and 22 seconds off, you can see he's gained coming home all the way. And then Magnificat the best for France. And a chase home here. Look at this. Norto gets there from Iverson and Glerson. And that is seven Norwegians in the top eight. Well, as they uh, come home, uh, time for us to almost take our lead. It doesn't look as if Andrew Mosgrave is going to get into the top 30. Terribly disappointing for him and the team. They really had hoped for better, but it's not to be. And it'll all be down at Davos next weekend in the races at altitude there. But time for us to take our leave. So my thanks to you for watching. On behalf of myself, David Goldstrom, and Eurosports Nordic team, bye-bye.